Well, the market's been looking very closely at what's been happening in Scotland, trying to understand whether an independent Scotland would be economically viable and what the implications were for a separation in terms of global financial markets. I suppose the first question is perhaps easier to answer than the second question at this point. We know Scotland would have a population of around about 5 million, so less scale, of course, than the overall UK as it is at the moment, at 63 million, but would still give it a population that's similar to the likes of Denmark and Finland, for example. Income uh, per person in Scotland is very similar to the UK national average, and it could also be argued, I suppose, that Scotland is the third richest region in the UK outside London and the South East. They've got some key areas of business that I think will continue to flourish, despite the fact there may be some issues around regulation and so forth, particularly in terms of insurance and asset management. Tourism continues to be a strong driver. They're the maker of premium products such as whiskey. And of course you've got North Sea Oil, all of which suggest that actually yes they could fund their operations, although they may have to increase their reserves. They may be forced even from day one to start thinking about having to cut spending or raising taxes in an effort to, to shore up its finances. But perhaps the wider question for investors is, what does it mean for financial markets? And this is when the uncertainties start to filter through what happens in terms of the currency. Now, the SNP have suggested they would keep the pound even if they decided to, to leave the um, United Kingdom and go for that independence. The three main parties here have suggested that won't be possible. So a real debate will be had around that, of course, and may result in some sort of currency union, which would be a little bit bizarre because it would force a newly independent Scotland to almost straight away hand back some of that fiscal sovereignty back to UK regulators, which would seem a little bit strange, you have to say. Question mark over the debt, of course. Would Scotland take its pro rata share of the debt? What price would the market charge them for doing that? What rate would they have to pay? And of course, there's significant question marks over the way in which public spending would operate and the negotiations that would have to take place as a result of that process. So I think in terms of uncertainty, there would be a significant ramping up of it if we were to see a yes vote from the referendum, although the political pollsters continue to suggest that a no vote is the most likely. And of course, that should calm market nerves.